What gets in the way of accountability? So many things get in the way of accountability. I think one of the first things is that as a culture, we haven't been socialized to really build the muscle of accountability. Accountability is really hard work. It's not just, oh, right, I did something wrong. I'm just going to say I'm sorry and it's going to be done. Um, we all know those people who do the, you know, someone tells you, hey, that really hurt me. And they do the, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I did that, it's totally right, you're totally right. That is not accountability. That is actually still about the person, right? Feeling a lot of shame or shame spiraling or trying to make it better. Um, but it's not really saying, oh, I really recognize that I did something that hurt this person, that I had an impact on them. So accountability requires a lot of listening um, to what is it that this person's trying to tell me that, um, that I did that impacted them. Um, folks really just wanna be seen and heard and understood. Um, and it requires a ton of self-reflection. Like, do I have enough inside of me? Um, do I got myself enough to know that if someone's telling me that I harmed them, that I hurt them, that I'm not gonna fall apart, that I'm not a bad person, um, you know, all those things that, we, that a lot of folks go through when they feel like confronted with something that they've done wrong. And in order to do that, they have to work a lot on themselves to be able to get to the place where they can be accountable. In my ex personal experience and like the experience of people I love and care about, it feels like shame gets in the way of accountability. Like shame and all of the things that are the fears underneath shame. So like for me, for example, I feel really terrible when I've done something wrong really, really terrible and really afraid of losing belonging. Like that the person's gonna be like, you're terrible. That thing was terrible and you're terrible and you suck. And like, you're a, that kind of person now and I don't wanna be around you anymore. Um, so like shame and then fear of loss of belonging, loss of connection, um, of being judged like everywhere I go. And I think that like in my experience at least that shame separates like shame is something that keeps me from other people shame is something that i've seen folks like makes them either become super like i when i feel ashamed i become super hyper focused on myself so that i actually can't be accountable to anyone else because i'm so feeling like embarrassed not wanting to be seen overwhelmed guilty like that it's actually all about me and that to get to accountability i actually need to move past shame to actually be able to show up me like hey i'm here to be able to respond to you and not make you have to caretake me in my shame. What I have seen in people, um, at least this is the way I, I have seen this expressed, is that people um, feel a lot of shame about both being a survivor of violence, but also of being um, someone who has caused harm. So I think one of the, the big shifts we're trying to make is really understanding how every day uh, violence is, how normalized it is, how any one of us could be a survivor of violence and probably is a survivor of violence, and how um, any one of us can also cause harm. And yet also not just make that kind of a this sort of neutral soup in which we all swim, but the, that there are situations in which the actions that we have taken, the attitudes that we have, need to be addressed in a specific way. I think we're trained that to to admit harm is to admit to being uh, a terrible person. Um, and so I think we flee from accountability. We don't wanna face the fact that we've hurt someone. I think mostly in the culture we're trained to avoid it or to, or to protect our intentions or our innocence. We just have so much practice and rehearsal of doing things in a punitive way, um, a way that's coming from skepticism rather than abundance or trust, rather than um, reorienting to what it looks like to bring everyone along with us, knowing that in order to do so, we need to open ourselves up to a lot more nuance and contradiction, that it's not as easy as the sort of Judeo-Christian hegemony um, or hegemonic idea that there's a right and a wrong, there's the righteous and there's the wrong, um, and really holding that there's complexity, that we're all fallible, We've all made mistakes, we all cause harm. It's not all to the same degree, it's not all balanced, but that there's a belief that we can heal from that, that we can hold that. We wanna see ourselves as outside of harm, like we're the ones who've been hurt, and it's other people who are doing the hurting, and that we're on the right side of justice. We're on the right side of these systems, and so it, it, it becomes 
you know, it kind of ends up being defined as a moral flaw that we've hurt other people or that we've made mistakes or that we've created harm or been complicit in harm. But actually, I think it's the opposite. I think we could actually do much better if we stepped into it and recognized it, that it's not surprising that we might cause harm or be complicit in harm because that's everything, that's what we're trained into, that's what, we're that's what we're encouraged, we're pulled into these systems. White supremacy culture seeps into interpersonal relationships, families, communities, nonprofit organizations that might have the best of intentions or values, and there are contradictions. They might say, we are here for racial justice, we are here for workers' justice, we're here for migrant justice, and that doesn't mean that they're incapable of, um, of harm, of retribution, um, and of all the patterns that we've been acculturated into that are steeped in avoidance of conflict, avoidance of shame, um, and on the other side, a, a righteous infliction of shame. Whether it's inside or outside of our movements, uh, we, we have a culture of finger wagging, of shaming, of distancing um, the people who are right or righteous from those who've caused harm. And so all of that, all of that baggage is what gets in the way of accountability. I think we're all taught to lie a lot. And um, I think that we're all really scared of not belonging. A lot of how we get trained to be in the world is about um, you know, protecting our own interests, being right, protecting our egos, having a sense of importance. And accountability asks you to strip some of that away. Accountability asks you to put your ego aside, to acknowledge your interrelationship with other people, and maybe not just somebody you did harm to, but kind of a, a ecosystem or a cluster of people who might be involved in your life. And it asks you to commit to being in relationship to people in a deep way. And I think there are a lot of challenges to that. You know, some of that is the individualism that I talked about. Some of that is that we also really get socialized into vengeance and punishment as responses to harm and kind of undoing that impulse to immediately go for kind of what's the most thing I can do to this person to let them know that they hurt me um, gets in the way of holding people account accountable because sometimes the rush to vengeance un erodes the possibility of having somebody in an, a more accountable process. Our norms of punishing someone when they've done something wrong really get in the way of accountability. It's a matter of incentives, right? So if you own up to something and then everyone's going to agree that you're a terrible person and you're not allowed to be around us anymore and we all hate you, why would you do that, right? And that starts as children when if you are bad or do the wrong thing, a lot of times you're punished. Um, and there are alternate ways of raising children that are about um, the fact that children have agency, children can consent, children can practice autonomy, and I think that that kind of works against that um, thing that a lot of people are socialized into, which is kind of a punishment and blame mentality that really feeds into justification for incarceration, mm -hmm. right? Because if people who do bad things are bad people and need to be kept away from the rest of us, then why would you own up to being one of those bad people who had done a bad mm -hmm. thing? One of the first things that needs to be there in order for folks who've hurt or abuse somebody to actually admit that they did it and work towards resolving the harm is we have to make it worth more worth it for them to admit what they did than it is for them to lie and deny about it. Um, you know, as an abuse survivor, as a survivor of childhood sexual abuse specifically, I can say that like it's an, it's endemic um, among survivors. Like most of us have the experience of survi as survivors of the people who've harmed us being like, you're crazy, that didn't happen, blah, 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 blah. There are a lot of people who honestly are like, if I admit that I did this, my life is over. You know, there's no way back. I'm going to lose absolutely everything that I have. No, I will have no friends, no community, no job, no home, nothing. And they're not wrong. You know, I would say especially for people who perpetuate childhood sexual abuse and harm, but also for folks who do other forms of harm. Um, I was in a Generation 5 training 
years ago now that stuck with me ever since, where um, the facilitator was like, okay, so what mechanisms out there exist? She was like, okay, what do most survivors want? And everybody was like, they want the person who harmed them to admit that they did it so that we can stop feeling nuts. Like, am I remembering this wrong? Blah, 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 blah. And she was like, okay, great. What is there out there in society that supports people for doing it? Like not giving them a cookie, but being like, hey, we're really glad that you were honest. And here's where we go from here. And there's dead silence in the room. And I was just like, right. When there's not models that people know about, that's like, you can say that you did something bad and you will not be rejected forever. You can actually make repair and there's still a place for you in the community. No one will do it. And the times that I've seen people who've caused harm actually admit it has been when it's been like, hey, you fucked up, but you know what? You're not the only one. And there's actually a road back if you'll admit what you did. And if you can like move towards listening to what the survivor and their supporters are asking you for and do the work. What would it look like if accountability wasn't scary? It will never be, accountability will never be easy or comfortable, but it also doesn't have to be scary. And I think right now we live in our culture, in our society, we, th- we use accountability almost as a threat, right? That, and people are scared of accountability. And, they're, and people aren't even, there are, they aren't even as scared of doing something wrong as they are of being caught and maybe then being held to account held accountable, right? But what if accountability wasn't a scary thing? What if it was something that was actually looked at as an opportunity and a place for growth and something that was generative? 